Okay, uh, welcome back to uh, Real Analysis. Uh, if you uh, recall, what we've been doing so far has been to uh, develop a lot of the groundwork for constructing the real numbers. And uh, in particular, last time, we actually uh, showed what the construction was for the real numbers. And the, the, it was motivated by noticing that the rational numbers, we know the rational numbers are ordered, they have an arithmetic, but there are gaps, okay? In particular, uh, not every bounded set has a supremum. So, for instance, uh, we think about the rational numbers as being ordered on a line, but we noted, for instance, that there are some lengths that do not appear uh, as a rational number. Uh, so if we call this length of the hypotenuse of a right triangle, 1, 1 triangle, if we give this a name, square root of 2, which we don't even know what this term means, but if I just call it this, this by this symbol, this length actually lives somewhere on this line, but it's not represented by a rational. In particular, it might be this particular length, which we're calling square root of 2, for reasons that will become clear later, uh, lives on this line, but it's not, there is no rational at this particular length. Now, uh, how do we actually get at the gap here without referring to the actual point at this gap? That's the question. And so if you take a look, for instance, at um, all the rationals. There's lots of rationals that, that actually get really close to the square root of 2, don't they? Okay, they, they sort of, in fact, encroach on this particular length. But there's nothing right here. So how do we get at the gaps? One of the problems with the rationals is that because the, the fact that it has gaps points out the fact that not every bounded set has a supremum. In particular, this set of rationals to the left of this particular point does not have a supremum. It does not have a least upper bound. That's what supremum means. So we noted that the rationals don't have what's called the least upper bound property. A set has a least upper bound property if every non-empty subset that's bounded above has a least upper bound. Okay? And of course, we're always referring to the particular set we're interested in. So when I say it has an upper bound, I mean in the set S. When I say it has a least upper bound, I mean in the set S. And if S here in this <coughs> statement is replaced by Q, it's not, it's not true, okay, as this particular set shows. Okay, good. So the idea then is to try to uh, fill in these gaps somehow. And um, how would you do that? Well, if we fill in the gaps, uh, we, we hope to get something that, that we would think of as the real numbers, but how do you do that without referring to the gaps themselves? Well, the idea is, if I want to get at this particular endpoint, I can do so by just looking at the, the rationals that, in fact, approach this endpoint, right? And just calling that referring to the endpoint by the rationals that lead up to it, okay? That's the idea of a cut, a Dedekind cut. A cut is, you just think of actually cutting the real, cutting the rationals at a particular point and looking at everything to the left. So uh, a cut is a subset of rationals that's not trivial, so it's not empty and it's not everything, not all the rationals. It's closed to the left or closed downward, as we might say, and it has no largest member. Okay, that's what a cut is. And then the, ra the real numbers will just be the set of all cuts. Okay, this is what we saw last time. Okay? So there are some things uh, uh, that remain to check. Uh, from last time, what we saw uh, is the following. So what we did with these cuts is we defined uh, an order, do you remember how we defined an order of cuts? If you have uh, a couple of uh, cuts, 
that looks something like this, how did we define whether one was less than the other? If one is included in the other, good. So defined order uh, was basically by inclusion. Okay, it was a very nice notion of order. We also defined an arithmetic, uh, which uh, includes the operations plus and times. Okay, and these were notions that we developed that were were what you might expect. In particular, if a cut is a collection of rationals, if I have a cut alpha and a cut beta then their sum is basically going to be all sums of rationals, one from alpha, one from beta. With me? Okay. That's what we defined addition to be. And uh, multiplication was defined somewhat similarly. You just had to worry a little bit about the signs of multiplying uh, things that are negative. So you define them first for positive, uh, for positive uh, reals, and then you define uh, them for negative in the natural way. Okay, so this is something we won't do, but uh, I encourage you to just think about how you would do this and try it if you like. Check that this is in fact an ordered field. Okay, so we've defined R, so check that R is, we know it has an order, and we see it as a field, but does the order play nice with the operations of the field? And uh, the answer is yes. Okay. We can think about this, actually, just without writing it down. You give me a cut. Uh, let's call it uh, alpha. And suppose it's less than beta. So that means the, the set of rationals is actually included in this set of rationals. So here's alpha. Here's beta. Okay, now, is it the case that if I add something to alpha and the same thing to beta, that order is preserved? So this is, um, this is alpha, this is beta. If I add another cut to this cut, what's, that, what's the effect on this cut going to be? Shift it, either left or right, right? Well, if I add the same cut to these, this collection, what will it do? Shift it also. Is order preserved? Yes. So we see order is preserved by addition. Multiplication, I encourage you to think about why that's the case. Okay, so it is in fact an ordered field. So what we'd like to do uh, next then is uh, verify a few other properties about R that I claimed were true last time. Okay, so in particular, does R contain Q as a subfield? And the answer is yes. It extends the, the, the rational numbers, R, the real numbers do. So let's see why that's true. To show that R actually extends Q as a subfield, what I mean is, is there a natural way that the rationals sit embedded in this construction uh, where we think about R as a collection of cuts. So which cuts correspond to the rational ones? Well, if the idea is to associate to points on the line the rationals to the left of it, then which collection is going to correspond to rational points on this line? Paul? Okay, or if you like, uh, I don't want to refer to the least upper bound yet, um, uh, I could just think of all the rationals less than that particular rational. Okay, so let's uh, then associate to some rational little q in big Q. What cut? Well, I'm going to associate to this the following cut. It will be the cut which I'll call q star just to remind ourselves this is actually a collection 